Hello and thank you for joining me for this uh, version of uh, study of God's Word and uh, it uh, happens to be a Sunday morning and hope that uh, your week, whatever day that you happen to be watching this is going well and that uh, you are allowing God's uh, grace and, and mercy to direct and, and uh, bless your life. I want to read today from Isaiah. It's going to be from the 29th chapter and uh, I'm going to begin in verse. Um, I'm going to begin in verse 13, and uh, we're going to we're going to talk about that. And Isaiah writes in verse 13. He says, "Wherefore the Lord says, For as much as the people draw near to me with their mouth and with their lips and do honor me, but they have removed their heart far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of man." Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of the prudent man shall be hid. Woe to them that seek deep to hide the counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who sees us, and who knows us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, for shall the work say of him that made it, uh, shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he has no understanding. It is not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and a fruitful field shall be established as a forest. And then he goes on in verse 18, he says, And in, the, in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek shall also increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one is brought to nothing, the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. So going back to verse 13, he says, uh, These people draw near to me with their, uh, with their mouth and their lips, and they honor me. Uh, but their hearts far from me, and, and I think that's uh, where we get sometimes that we get into a mode that, you know, that maybe we proclaim ourselves as being, uh, you know, seeing ourselves as, as uh, you know, uh, in line with God and, 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 you know, being obedient to God, but, uh, and maybe that, you know, in our minds that we're, we're doing the right things. I, uh, I sat in a restaurant yesterday and, and heard a lady speaking, and, and you've been in these restaurants where uh, there's there's somebody who's talking and it's talk their their volume is above everyone else whether they mean to or not you can just you know you just without trying to listen you just hear everything that's going on and and um, I heard her saying several things about church and about you know who they helped and their pastor and all these kinds of things and 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 then from there it went into you know all sorts of things about talking about different people. And I thought, you know, that's that's kind of how we are sometimes. Is we we put on this thing about as you know, our we proclaim that you know we're we're churchgoers and we do all these kind of things. But in reality, do we do we show forth the fruits of the spirit? And that's really what it's all about. We can speak the things. We can speak about you know what a great uh, place that we worship together, or what uh, you know great works that you know I've done or she's done or what. But the things that really speak the most is how do we how do we act? You know what what is our what is our day-to-day uh, -day conversation, our our conduct, and how do we appear to the world? Because that's the most important thing. And I and I've talked about that before. Is that we we as the church must give first and foremost, not with our lips, not with not with any other thing, but that what we our uh, conduct is among the world and that has to be really important among each other too is we really need to show forth love and God's grace because what does the world want anything those that are that are seeking something what would they want to do with a God that makes people that that act uh, in, in the fashion that we do as Christians some way and so act in a way that does that and so uh, as as our as our mouths honor him that's that's okay but let our conduct really honor him. And he says in verse 14, Therefore I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and wonder. And says, 
although that um, although the people don't deserve this I'm still gonna do a marvelous work and that shows God's grace and that really is is a, the greatest story ever told is that God commends his own love towards us even while we were yet sinners Christ died for you and I and that really speaks of God's grace and that we never deserved it and so we didn't we didn't have anything that merited that grace but God says, I'm, I'm going to choose to do that. I'm going to choose to set my love upon you. I'm going to choose to set my grace upon you. And I'm going to do a marvelous work. And he says, Woe to them that seek to seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works in the dark. Uh, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as potter's clay. And for he shall make a work uh, of him that made it. So God is a creator. God, God is creator. Shall the, he says... Shall the thing that uh, frames say of him, or the thing that's created say of him, that, that created him, you have no understanding? In other words, is sometimes man gets to thinking that God doesn't hear or see anything or uh, know anything about uh, who we are, but he does. He sees all things. And, uh, you know, God is sovereign in that. He's created us, and he, is, he has made us, um, you know, as, as uh, he designed, as, as he's the potter and and we're just clay. He's he's created us. We're but dust. Uh, we're but just a moment in time, and we can't hide anything. Our, you know, you, we, you and I think that we can get by with things, and uh, as far as that God doesn't see things, but He sees all things. He knows our hearts, and He knows our, you know, our motives. And uh, you know, we can deceive others, but we never deceive God. And so, He says in verse 17, "Is of yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and a fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest." So God's going to take something that that uh, maybe didn't have uh, have the uh, there's no motive for doing anything, but God is going to take and uh, create it for Himself a people, and that's what He's done for the church. He's He's drawn out people from all nations and tongues and backgrounds and and race and. You know, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, there's neither male nor female, but all are one in Christ. And it, it, that's the thing is, that's the beauty of God's love, is that He poured it upon all flesh, upon all people. And that's what He's done here, is it doesn't, it's not a matter of, of how, you know, how uh, mighty someone is, uh, you know, how... how uh, why someone is or, or their nobility but God says look I just looked upon uh, a people that I'm going to pour out uh, my grace upon so getting to verse 18 this is really where I want to get to the kind of the, this verse here and he says in that day in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness so uh, in that day, I, I, when I read that, I said, Lord, what, what day are you speaking of exactly here? What, what is it you're talking about? And um, in one of the other scriptures, there was a reference to another, another verse over in uh, another part of Isaiah. And he's talking about the, uh, the day that he pours out his spirit. And I thought about on the day of Pentecost... Uh, when the spirit, you know, the the disciples were in the upper room, and the spirit was poured out, and it became as tongues of fire upon everyone, and men began to speak in in all all different tongues. They began to speak and and proclaim things in a tongue that was not native to who they were, and those that were there heard that, and they and they thought, well, these men are crazy. What's what's going on? I mean, they're they're speaking. We're hearing we're hearing this great story in our own. Uh, language and and what you know are these men drunk? What's what's happening? And and uh, Peter answered that, and he says, "Look, guys, this is the day, the day that that's happened right now is that very day that God spoke about in Joel, and He says, in that day, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and and that's that's what He's talking about in that day." And we live in those days today when God has poured out His Spirit upon all flesh in abundance. And He's done that because that's, that's the, the whole part of the salvation plan. You see, the Great Grace Covenant says this, that the Grace Covenant was between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Where God the Father is the one that, that uh, created the plan. He devised the plan. 
and uh, that was that was his part of the covenant and Jesus part of the covenant was to come and execute the plan and that's exactly what he did and in just the right time uh, actually uh, the Bible says you know Jesus was slain before the foundation of the earth I mean this was this didn't this wasn't a last minute plan or uh, you know uh, something that God uh, came up with just because uh, you know nothing else worked this was a plan that God had from the beginning this was God's plan it was to redeem man and it was to be redeemed only by himself as God coming in the flesh Jesus is coming in the flesh born of a virgin and he came and he executed the plan he came and fulfilled God's requirement his righteousness and he then he took upon himself at that cross the sin of you and I all the sin of the world and he took it upon himself especially those that believe he took upon himself and that was the execution of the plan now he's talking about here he's talking about the Holy Spirit coming you remember Jesus said told the disciples he says I'm gonna go away but if I go away I'm not gonna leave you as orphans he said I'm gonna I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the administrator in this covenant he's the administrator of the salvation plan and so what he comes he comes and he and he and he brings about the reproof of man and he and he convicts man of sin and and that may be where you're at in in life today is maybe God is speaking to your heart about something through his Holy Spirit because that's how he speaks to us today is through his spirit and through his word and the and the spirit makes the word alive and that's why he says that that uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so we as God makes his word alive to us see we can we can read the word but until the spirit brings life to that word and he opens our ears and he opens our eyes and he says in that day the deaf hear the the deaf hear the words of the book and that's the word of God and that that's the Holy Spirit bringing that word to life in us that we can hear it you see before the Holy Spirit comes to do that we're dead we're dead to God and we're we're alive in our sin. We're 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 um, uh, we're. It's impossible for us to come to know God apart from the the Holy Spirit making His Word alive, open our ears, that we might hear the Word of God, and that we might see His grace and His goodness. And that's at that time when God makes alive our spirit and we're born again and that we come to understand and we, we freely come to him at that point and say, God, I see that, that uh, I see my sin. I see all of the, the time of my uh, uh, mistakes, all the, all the things that I've been uh, walking in and hiding in, in sin, all of this sin I've been carrying. I understand that what it is now and you, and you come to repentance because you come to understand who we are. We come to understand the depravity of who we are when the Holy Spirit allows us to see that and to see God's holiness and that our ears are open and our eyes begin to see the goodness of God. And he said the meek, in verse 19, the meek shall increase their joy in the Lord and the poor among the men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Jesus said, blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom of of God you see when we humble ourselves we humble ourselves and that we, we we rid ourselves of all self we take away all self and all of our selfish motives and we begin to take in and desire to know what God desires for us we humble ourselves before him and say God and you know God has, has spoke to me before and he said you know Tony you don't you don't know anything you 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 you're you you're not wise. He said, "I'm I'm the one that is wise here, and I understand that, and He is the one that's all wise. But He gives us wisdom, and He gives us understanding. And as we humble ourselves, He'll do that for us, and He'll begin to make us wise in His ways. And you know, the the wisdom of this world is coming to nothing, but God's wisdom is eternal." And as we grow in the wisdom and knowledge of Him, that's where true wisdom comes. And that's where true joy comes as we humble ourselves and we seek after God's desire, His wisdom and His ways, and that we're, we begin to be rich in the Spirit. We begin to be rich in what is true riches, eternal riches, not the riches of the wisdom or things of this world. He says, For the terrible one is brought to nothing, the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. So those that, that ignore 
this outpouring of grace, those that, that ignore the mercy that God is extending, uh, those are going to be cut off because judgment is coming. Judgment will come on that, on that day and that will be judged in our works, will be judged by our words, and will be judged by this very word that, that is spoken right here that says that, that if we will come before Him and humble ourselves and that He's going to open our ears and He's going to open our eyes that we may see and hear the truth. And so that's the word that I want to share with you today. And I pray that, uh, that God has spoken to you through His Holy Spirit. I pray that His Holy Spirit would lead your life uh, both today and uh, in, in this week. And that you would be blessed in all that you do. Uh, seek Him through His Word. Seek Him through His, the, through His Spirit. And especially begin to pray because God desires to hear from His people. He desires to commune with you and I. So be blessed. I'm loving. God bless you.